Hello, and welcome to today's video where I'll be covering my webcomic process in Clip Studio Paint. In today's video, we'll continue going through a collection of lesser known but incredibly useful Clip Studio Paint features you can use when making a webcomic. Links to additional tutorials, as well as everything mentioned in today's video, will be down in the description below. In the last video, we covered a few underrated features in the Select menu. Today we're moving on to the Window menu. One of the most useful features you can use when deciding on colors for your work is the Intermediate Color panel. You can find this by going to Window, Intermediate Color. When you open this panel, you're presented with a gradient grid made up of four colors. By choosing a color on your color wheel and then clicking one of the four corners, it'll replace that color with the one you've chosen. You can change the number of swatches by resizing the panel. This is a great feature for comics that use limited color palettes, as it'll give a whole set of colors to pick from instantly. Or you can use these colors with a layer mode like Multiply or Overlay to change pre-existing colors into something more harmonious. Similarly, if you want to create a monochromatic or single color palette to pick from, the Approximate Color panel may be useful for you. You can find this under Window, Approximate Color. Like the Intermediate Color panel, the Approximate Color panel will create a set of swatches for you to pick from, just in the single color you've chosen rather than a group. You can adjust the saturation and vibrancy of your swatches with the sliders on the side and resize the window to adjust the number of swatches available. Another handy feature from the Window menu is the Subview panel. You can find this under Window, Subview. This panel exists as a place to open and view reference images. This works for both flattened images as well as clip files. You can switch between different imported images using the arrows at the bottom of the panel. When an image is opened in the Subview panel, you can color pick from it by clicking the eyedropper in the bottom corner or move it around with a hand tool when the eyedropper is deselected. It can also be rotated and mirrored vertically and horizontally. When making comics, I like to put my character references in this panel so I can easily reference them as I draw, as well as color pick directly from their designs so I know I'm using the right colors. This panel is also great for doing art studies or taking pose references from photos too. Finally. The last feature I want to discuss today is the Colorize tool. This can be found under the Edit menu. The Colorize tool uses AI to automatically color your line art for you. This can produce some really interesting effects depending on which settings you use. For best results, make sure your line art layer is selected and set it as your reference layer. You could do that by clicking this little lighthouse icon in the Layers panel here. By selecting Colorize All, the AI will choose random colors based on your line art. As you can see, this can look kind of strange on its own, but what makes it useful is how it can be applied alongside colors you've chosen yourself. When set to multiply on top of pre-chosen colors, it gives an interesting gradient effect to certain areas and makes the whole thing have a more watercolor kind of feel. The Use Hint Image and Colorize option will do the same process but using pre-selected colors you've laid down on the canvas. With your line art layer set as reference, create a new layer beneath it and scribble in some colors wherever you want the AI to put them. This will be your color hint layer. Then proceed to colorize. Now it'll produce the same watercolor type effect as before, but with specific colors you've chosen. This is great for achieving a more cohesive watercolor look on top of your pre-chosen colors. Finally, for a more controlled result, you can use the Use More Advanced Settings option to tweak the effect until you get a result you like. Just make sure your line art has been set as reference and your color hint layer is selected for best results. Those have been a few of my favorite lesser known Clip Studio Paint features. Check the description below for my social media links and more tutorials. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.